Consider this, your body is made up of 79 organs working together to keep you alive. Your skin is by far the largest one, and it's unique in how accessible it is to see and to touch. Serious issues with your heart, liver, bowels, and even your hormones can show up in your skin. And in some cases, knowing what to look for can mean the difference between life and death. So let's dive into it and discover what your skin says about your health. Did you know your diet can have a direct impact on your skin? And no, I'm not talking about acne. This is dermatitis herpetiformis, and as the name suggests, it looks a lot like herpes. Tiny fluid-filled blisters that are grouped together. But don't let the name fool you. This rash has nothing to do with the herpes virus. It's actually a direct result of a diet high in gluten, a protein found in wheat, barley, and rye. This patient has celiac disease. Some combination of risk genes and environmental triggers have caused the immune system to react to gluten and mount an attack. Part of that attack is creating antibodies, a type of protein that binds to perceived threats in the body, targeting it for destruction by the immune system. Unfortunately, the immune system mistakenly attacks an enzyme in the small bowel called TTG. This is one of the many ways that the immune system destroys the lining of the small bowel in celiac disease, causing weight loss, bloating, diarrhea, and nutritional deficiencies. But what does that have to do with the skin? Well, some people with celiac disease also produce antibodies against a similar enzyme called ETG that's found in the skin. Do you see where I'm going with this? This leads to immune activation in the skin, which causes a horrible itchy rash. So we can get a clue of what's going on in the small bowels just by looking at the skin. So how do we know it's not herpes if they look similar? Well, first off, the location. It'd be really unusual to get herpes on your elbows and your knees, but usually we do a biopsy anyway. So a small piece of skin is cut out and sent to the lab where they do special staining to check for antibodies in the skin. Now this is a really cool image because you can actually see markers attached to the antibodies in the skin that are lighting up as fluorescent green. So this confirms the diagnosis. Luckily, the rash and the itch will usually clear up completely after switching to a strict gluten-free diet. Okay, now this is a xanthoma, which is essentially a fatty plaque in your skin. Usually they don't cause any symptoms, but sometimes patients will come in because they're a nuisance or because they have cosmetic concerns. But if I see one of these, I'm immediately concerned about what's going on internally. If there are fatty plaques that are building up in your skin, then they could also be building up in other parts the body like the coronary arteries of your heart. So you've got to ask the question, why are your lipid levels so high? Sometimes it's a genetic condition, but often it's linked to diabetes or liver disease. A fun fact about xanthomas is that you can often tell what type of lipid is involved based on where they appear in the body. For example, eruptions like this can happen along the shoulders, arms, or buttock, and it's a sign of high triglycerides. In cases like this, my biggest concern is underlying diabetes. Whereas xanthomas that form in the tendons, particularly in the Achilles tendon at the back of the ankle, are often associated with a genetic condition called familial hypercholesterolemia, and that causes high LDL cholesterol. While we're on the topic of things depositing in the skin, here's a cause that often gets overlooked and misdiagnosed. Gout is a type of arthritis that's caused by uric acid crystals that build up in the joints. The flares come on rapidly and they cause excruciating pain with redness and swelling. It used to be considered the disease of kings because it's typically brought on by rich foods that contain purines like red meat, seafood, and alcohol, things that were usually only accessible to the wealthy. King Henry VIII famously suffered from gout, among other conditions. And and by the end of his life, he was so incapacitated that he had to be carried around in a special chair. With such severe gout and no treatments at the time, it wouldn't surprise me if he had also developed skin deposits. The same uric acid crystals that irritate the joint can deposit in the skin, forming these lumpy lesions called tophi. You can see them around the joints, particularly in the fingers and toes, and even on the outer edge of the ear. And even more concerningly, those same crystals can deposit into the kidneys, and that can form kidney stones and it can actually cause permanent kidney damage. Luckily, we now have really effective medications to lower uric acid levels, something I'm sure Henry VIII really wishes he had access 
too. Okay, next let's talk about skin tags. I'm sure you've seen these before. They're quite common and they usually show up in areas where there's friction against skin or clothing, like eyelids, neck, or armpits. While skin tags themselves are harmless, they can be a warning for certain metabolic conditions like diabetes. Keep in mind that skin tags do have a genetic component and they can run in families. But if you do have multiple skin tags, particularly around the neck or in the armpits, it's worth getting screened for diabetes with a blood test called hemoglobin A1C. Here's another common one that I'm sure you've seen. People will often call these age spots, although I think the best name I've ever heard is barnacles of aging. Don't you love it? The medical term is seborrheic keratosis, or SK for short. And I always feel like they look kind of waxy, like a blob of candle wax. And when you touch them, it's tempting to think that you can just peel them off, but I would strongly advise against that. They're harmless in and of themselves, but if you suddenly develop a massive eruption of these lesions and you see them all over, that could be the first sign of a cancer. It's called the lesser trellet sign, and it doesn't mean you for sure have cancer, but it's concerning enough that you definitely need to get checked out. If you want to become more involved in the channel and join a community of positive, curious minds, then I want to invite you to become a VMD member. When you join, you'll get access to The Doctor's Lounge, a monthly live stream with me and Mark, the chance for an exclusive one-on-one -on -one video chat with me, the opportunity to have your questions featured and answered in future videos, and access to these cute emojis. I want to make this as accessible as possible. So I've set the price as low as YouTube will allow at just 99 cents per month. And don't worry, this won't affect the regular content available to everyone. I'll pin a link in the comment section so that you can learn more and join. Okay, back to the video. Okay, let's talk about skin color. If you ever notice your skin or your eyes are turning a yellowish color, this is a really concerning sign and you need to seek medical attention immediately. It's called jaundice and it's caused by a buildup of bilirubin, which is produced when your body recycles old red blood cells. Normally, it shouldn't build up. It should get processed by your liver and then moved into the intestines where it ultimately leaves your body in your stool. And a fun fact, the end product of this process is called stercobilin, and that's what gives your poop a brown color. Now, if you develop jaundice, it either means that there's been a massive breakdown of red blood cells that's overwhelmed your liver, there's something wrong with the liver itself, or the bile duct is blocked and it's unable to drain into the intestines. And I don't think I need to tell you that none of that's good news. But there is one condition that's harmless, and that's a genetic condition called Gilbert's syndrome. People with Gilbert's syndrome will often have episodes of mild jaundice that are usually triggered by stress or illness. Their livers just don't handle bilirubin as efficiently as usual. And although some people report some abdominal pain or fatigue, it doesn't actually cause any long-term issues. Thank goodness. There's actually some evidence that people with Gilbert's have a lower risk of heart disease and certain types of cancers, which is likely due to bilirubin's antioxidant effects so it could be a beneficial trait. I once had someone tell me that really itchy skin is worse than pain. I think it depends what kind of pain it is, but it really can drive you crazy. It usually means that your skin is irritated, whether that's a cold Canadian winter or mosquito bites or just new laundry detergent. But other times it can be a sign of a more serious problem. When a patient tells me that their whole body is itchy, particularly their palm or the soles of their feet, and I can't find any kind of rash, it makes you worried that there could be liver disease, kidney disease, or even cancer. One common presentation is in pregnant women. Later in pregnancy, some women develop an issue with their liver where the bile doesn't flow properly. This causes a buildup of bile acids in the blood, which can cause debilitating itching for the mother, and it can pose serious risks to the baby. In these cases, women will often be induced to deliver a few weeks early to reduce the baby's exposure. And luckily for the mother, the itching goes away after delivery. Now, this isn't meant to scare you every time you feel itchy. And actually just talking about it now, I'm feeling itchy. Just remember, there are lots of common, less serious reasons you can feel itchy, like dry skin or medication side effects. But if the itching lasts longer than a few weeks, despite moisturizing, then you should probably see your doctor. Okay, now let's talk about spider nevi or spider angioma. Nope, it has nothing to do with actual spiders, thank God. 
but I bet whoever named it thought they looked similar. Normally, the small arteries that supply blood to the skin open and close based on your body's temperature. I'm sure you've gotten out of the sauna or out of a shower and noticed that your skin is more flushed and red than usual. That's because heat causes blood vessels to open up in an attempt to cool you off by having blood circulating closer to the surface of your skin. And the opposite happens when you're cold. But sometimes these little vessels can get stuck open, leading to spider nevi. A really cool thing about spider nevi is if you apply pressure to them, it'll block off the blood supply and they'll temporarily disappear. You can use your finger to do this, or if you use a glass, it's even easier to see because you apply pressure and look through the glass to see if it disappears. Having one or two of these is usually normal and nothing to worry about. But when I start to see three or more, that's when I start wondering about underlying health conditions. The main concern? liver cirrhosis. And in general, the number and the size of the spider nevi may reflect the severity of the liver disease. But it could also mean you're pregnant. About two thirds of women will develop spider nevi during their pregnancy, and it usually goes away after childbirth. So what do pregnancy and liver disease have in common? Believe it or not, high estrogen levels. Yep, the liver is responsible for breaking down estrogen. And when it's not working properly, estrogen builds up in the body and it leads to these little blood vessels expanding. So take a look on your face, neck, upper chest, and arms. That's usually where you'll find them. So what I hope you take away from this video is that your skin is far more than just a protective barrier. It's also a vital window into your overall health and it can give subtle clues about what's happening beneath the surface. So next time you're rushing to cover up a red spot or a rough patch with makeup or clothes, pause for a second. Consider why it's there and what it might be telling you about your health. You don't need to have all the answers, but noticing changes and bringing them to your doctor is a great first step. And there's more to come. Part two of this video is coming soon, so be sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so that you don't miss it. And click here if you wanna learn what your tongue says about your health. So, bye for now.